Almost overnight, COVID-19 has revolutionized, or destroyed, institutions and norms that were once the high watermark of a hyper-connected global world. Alongside frictionless international air travel and abundant gig economy work, we can now add seeing a movie in the theater to the list of things that once were. Born in the flickering light and shadow of a magic lantern, the cinema has taken myriad shapes and forms. Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Whether as a passport to new worlds, a welcome diversion in dark times, or a blinding source of truth, the cinema, both as a technology and language, has arguably done more to invent modern life than any invention or political abstraction of the last century. Even in the midst of financial instability, war, and rapid technological transformation, Come to me now. The show still has somehow managed to go on. COVID-19 changed all that. Cinemas around the world have been shuttered. Productions ground to a halt. Thousands of workers are now jobless. But the solution to the current crisis doesn't seem so straightforward. With the widespread adoption of streaming services like Netflix and Hulu, as well as a system for releasing new films directly to streaming, people are now able to enjoy the cinema from the comfort of their own homes, on their own schedule, and with their own concessions. And coupled with other technological advances, there's some approximation of the communal experience. But the hopefully temporary death of the cinema points to a widening cultural loss. One of cinema's foundational allures has been radically disrupted. The disjunctive pleasure of watching images alone, together, in a room. The cinema-going experience has given rise to a comforting set of rites and rituals, traditions we return to time and time again. It's just after I see a movie, I like to go get a piece of pie and talk about it. It's sort of a little tradition I have. It's provided us with moments of kinship and romance and ones of intimacy and solitude. New ways of seeing, even feeling the image together, whether it is sad, joyous, hilarious, or frightening. Maybe the cinema is even more than those things. But until we can go back into the dark with strangers again, until we can tangle ourselves in the perversions and pleasures of the cinematic gaze, we can only remember. Until then, it'll be a lonely trip.